What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really, really excited. For a long time now, I have wanted to do this recreation of a New York City dish. I originally saw it on Brunch Boys Jeremy Jacobowitz. <laughs> Jeremy Jacobowitz. Hope that that's how you pronounce your name, Jeremy. Sorry if it's not. Anyways, I've wanted to recreate this dish from Isabelle's in New York City for the longest time. And basically it's a pork ragu with a fresh whipped ricotta on top. I'm sure you noticed that you didn't see me make the ricotta here and that is because I made the ricotta on my TikTok channel. So if you guys head to my TikTok channel, you can see how I made the fresh ricotta. It's actually not the traditional way to make ricotta. So I'm gonna have to make it the traditional way soon it seems. But uh, this is also a way to make ricotta, super, super easy. And then the only thing that I did in addition to what you see in the TikTok video is I just whipped it up. I took a hand blender and I whipped it up until it was nice and creamy and fluffy. Mm, so good. I did not know exactly what the recipe was here. I kind of just saw his video of them preparing it along with like some basic hints like that it was like four hour slow cooked pork so mine is a four hour braised ground pork he named all of the rest of the ingredients but no amounts so i just sort of threw some things in uh, that dish is also made with lumake which apparently is italian for snail uh, this is not lumake this is barilotti i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it i found this at the store and thought it looked pretty close and thought that it would do a good job at holding on to some of that white ragu that we have here. Anyways, guys, I'm so hungry, so hungry today. Holy moly. This <sighs> smells amazing. I'm just extra excited to get into this. P.S. I absolutely love <laughs> my pan. My brother got it for me for my birthday. I actually have the... Uh, larger Dutch oven version of this too. They're both Lodge brand. I'm not sure why I haven't like created a whole like Amazon storefront for myself at this point, but maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll put an Amazon storefront together and I'll add this and all of my other favorite cooking things. I can add like this tank top there, all that kind of stuff. So I'll go ahead and do that and just like link my storefront below. That'll be the easiest from, from now on, I think. I really wish that I could eat this with a spoon, <laughs> but I feel like it'd be really difficult. So we'll see how large of a bite I can get. With the fork. Oh my gosh, this ricotta is just making me crazy. <gasps> oh, hi kitten. All right guys, cheers. Mm. Oh my gosh. First of all, the pork, totally worth cooking like that. My mom actually was like, Lindsay, I don't understand how you can slow cook ground pork. Like, wouldn't you want to get like a pork butt and slow cook that? And while I do agree that that would also be amazing, this is surprisingly good. It does have that like slow cooked flavor, that like depth of flavor that you really only get from like having developed cooked down liquid over the course of a couple of hours. And that's basically what I did. I was just adding more chicken stock to the pan as it needed it. And that liquid was just cooking down concentrating even more the pork was caramelizing and browning all over which is like a new concept for me because typically i'll caramelize my meat in the pan but it only gets caramelized on the bottom in this case it was like the whole surface area of the meat was getting caramelized at once which yes huge fan of There's a luxuriousness 
to the sauce because of the butter that we added. A little bit of cheese, a lot of bit of cheese. I also really like that the ricotta is still a little cool, not cold, but cool. So the contrast in temperatures is awesome. This is really, really comforting. Oh my gosh. The meat is so tender too because it had that liquid in the pan while it was braising in the oven. It really maintained a lot of moisture. I've got to try that with a bolognese. I think I told you guys my favorite lasagna is in South Florida and they have like the most amazing bolognese. It just has that slow cooked flavor. The meat is like so finely ground and I'm like still kind of wondering how they get it to be like that finely ground. I feel like I'm onto something now though. I feel like this application with beef and they probably use veal. I kind of have a problem using veal. It's just something I'm trying to stay away from. Shane's gonna love this. I don't know if he'll like the ricotta. He's not a cheese person, but he's gonna love this. The rosemary too. I like that that's the only herb in here. It kind of perfumes your mouth. Rosemary is a very strong flavor. I wouldn't say that it's overpowering in here necessarily, but it just does give you that like woodsy essence that rosemary kind of has. This is the first white ragu I've ever made too. So I'm definitely gonna have to try this another time with something else. I know you can make a white ragu out of beef, whatever. Oh my gosh. The butter is so key. And I added quite a bit of it. I'm actually going to be in New York City in two weeks. I think 
it's actually two weeks from today. And so I feel like maybe I should head over there and get one of these to go or something, just to like see how close I got, you know? This is so good, guys. There's this luscious, I know I've said that a couple times now, but like the silky mouthfeel from the cheese and the butter. By the way, somebody asked me, I think it was in my story, because I'm headed to Tampa in less than a week, and I'll be there for a wedding, and I'm going to be like spending some time with a friend there for a little while before I head up to Connecticut for my grandmother's funeral, but uh, somebody asked me if I was going to do like a meet and greet or anything. I am going to end up doing like events or something like that, but... I'm thinking I'm gonna wait just like a little bit longer to do something like that. It still feels like we're like on the brink here of being able to just like do things normally again. I can feel it. So I'm gonna be like with my people this time, but hopefully like later this year or next year, I can start doing events that y'all can come to and meet me. Very flattered that you guys want me to do those things. Hmm? This is seriously so good. I love discovering new things to make, new ways to cook things. One of my biggest inspirations, I'd say, on Instagram is Half Baked Harvest. If you guys follow Half Baked Harvest, I just absolutely love like all of her recipes. Like I haven't made all of them, but just like looking at the recipe, looking at the flavors that she puts together, they're so creative, but they're not like so out there that they become unfamiliar. And that's like my goal is to be able to start recipe developing and creating all of my own recipes because right now I do a lot of inspos still, you know, inspirations from different restaurants, inspiration from different things that I've seen. And I know that's probably what she does too, but I don't know. I feel like I could take it so much further than I am right now. And so her page really just like gets me going. I feel like I really need to just like put my head down and start coming up with different ideas. The other thing is though, like I don't have all of this like ability to recipe develop. Like I just can't. If I recipe develop, like I would never have anything to post. <laughs> you guys see the process of my recipe development. Like I make something the first time and it's not perfect, but I show you guys anyways. So I can't make things like 10 times in a row to perfect it because I wouldn't have anywhere to put the food. I only have so many calories in a day. I need like some volunteers for people to come eat my food <laughs> that I'm recipe developing. So good.
I absolutely love Greyhounds, by the way. It's just grapefruit and vodka. It's definitely my juice of choice <laughs> when it comes to mixed drinks. Like, if I'm gonna get a juice, it's gonna be grapefruit. Okay guys, I'm getting pretty full. I don't want it to stop, I really don't, but being responsible here. So I'll do one more bite, and then I'm calling it. Save the rest for Shane, possibly more for me later. So good. You know, this was so easy. Like, yeah, I put it in the oven to braise for four hours, but there was really no work involved. I mean, sure, you have to like stick around. Every 30 minutes I went, kind of gave it a stir, replaced the liquid, but that was really it, guys. I mean, that's just that like initial Part at the beginning where you're cooking the onions and the garlic and the pork all together and then the end after the pork comes out of the oven finishing everything up super easy super delicious yeah gonna say i I'm, I'm pretty proud of the job that i did here today i'm really curious what theirs tastes like in new york city so curious i'm like is it close is it close we'll find out all right just one more one more So good. All right, guys. Again, that was amazing. So simple. Obviously, I will put the recipe, what I did, in the description of the video in case you guys want to try to make this yourself. And you totally, totally should make it yourself. I'll also link the restaurant that I was copycatting from in New York City, Isabel's, in case you're in the city and you want to check them out for yourself. Comment below what you thought about this recipe, about this recreation. Have you been to Isabel's in New York City? Did I get it kind of close booking? Thank you guys so much for joining today. You guys just don't know how much I appreciate you and the time that you spend with me. Time is just so precious. Time and calories for me especially <laughs> are so precious. So I just totally, totally appreciate the time that you guys take out of your day to spend with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. Comment below all the things and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.